right, folks. So I'm on my way to Texas with this load I picked up in uh, Plymouth, Michigan yesterday. If you remember, I was there with Patrick. We both got loads going to Royce City, Texas. And I left Effingham, Illinois this morning about 540. And I'm going to stop off here and do a 30 minute break at the Maverick North Little Rock Yard. It's about a little over seven hours, you know, from Effingham to here. And, you know, by eight hours, you have to take a 30 minute break in order to get the last three hours of your driving time on your clock. So that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully, hopefully get a truck wash because I can do that while I'm doing my break. Here's the Maverick Driving Academy on the right. You might can see some action out there. Yeah, they got some stuff going on over there. If you're looking for a place to get your CDL and start your career, there's a good place to start. Let's get in here. What is that walking down the road? <laughs> Woo! Lord, man. You need a shirt. All right. Oh, they're opening the door for me. Okay. All right. So I see there's a truck in the wash. So I'll pull up and be the next one in. Giving you a look of the grounds here. So the GPS says it's uh, it's about five hours still to get from here to my customer. So I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna get down to somewhere somewhere south of Texarkana this evening, this afternoon. Just how far I go, I'm not sure. All right, more later. All right, boys and girls, it's my turn to get into the truck wash. Man, I tell you, this place is busy. There's at least two trucks behind me. So I'll just ask them to do the truck, not worry about the trailer. Just giving you a look at it. You know, I had a problem. I got a message two or three days ago from the Maverick office saying that it'd been like 22 days since I had a truck wash, which is incorrect. So I called my fleet manager, told him, said, look, I just got my truck washed yesterday. I get it washed every weekend just the truck sir stuff. yeah thank you i was just letting him know to just worry about the truck since there's lots of people behind me anyway yeah i don't know what's wrong with the communication you know when you get your truck washed there's a form on our tablet that you send in to let them know you got your truck washed but i think the attendants also are supposed to um send in something to confirm that maybe that's that's where the problem is anyway more later all right folks as you can tell we're getting out of the truck wash just gonna pull over here and park somewhere finish out my 30 minute break still got about 15 minutes or so just wanted to give you a little look of the yard there's one side of the shop. It's gonna be hard to get a picture of the training building because there's a big canopy truck parked here. But there it is straight ahead. 
That's the main training facility. If you come here with your CDL, you'll just go straight into there and do a couple of weeks of new hire training, safety training, securement training. And then uh, get assigned to a trainer truck for about three weeks, usually. And then you're on your own. All right, let me get back to up here. There's a shot of the, there's not a whole lot parked here at the yard, but you can see up there in the front, looks like they've got a, probably a bunch of new 23 model trucks up there. Like we saw Patrick in yesterday. All right, more later. All right, guys, just showing you a look of the lot. Got a couple of guys over there on a lift doing some work on the roof. There's the training building. Got a few trainees out there in their safety vests, you can see. But uh, just remind you, here's what we're hauling. Boy, doesn't the truck look good now? I feel much better driving down the road now. All right, remember this is what we got, steel tubing from Plymouth, Michigan. Just going around, doing a quick check of the trailer. Make sure everything's good. The delivery window on this is Friday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I'm planning on being there at probably before 8. All right, so there's a look of things. All right, guys, got to hit the road, heading to Texas. All right, folks, Friday morning. And I uh, just got off of I-30 about a half a mile back there. I'm supposed to be taking a ride up here to get to my customer, a place called Rockwell American. Never been there before, that I recall. So... Uh, I don't think that's it. I don't know. One GPS says to turn here and one says to turn back there. back there for the place I'm looking for. Anyway, we'll search for it together. It's about 7.30 a.m. They start receiving at 8. Well, hold on. Let me check my address here. Well, folks, here's a case of just bad information. You know, some information on our uh, order would, would have helped on this. Because I went in and checked in there because I matched up the address on my order. You know, the name on my order, I'm looking for Rockwell American. I haven't seen any signs for Rockwell American. But I did find the address I'm looking for. So I go in and check in and the guy says, Oh yeah, you should have turned in on off the service road back there where the sign that says Dexter. I was like, well, I don't have anything saying I'm looking for Dexter. <laughs> he says, yeah, it happens to almost every truck driver. I'm like, oh, great. So... What I've got to do now, per his suggestion, is go down to the end of this road, turn around, and come back out here, 
go back out and do a loop on the service roads basically uh, come back around like I just did and turn in for the entrance to Dexter Industries oh, oh, you know what do you do what do you do so go down to the end of the road end of the road anyway that's what I got to do folks so I'll see you when I get back around there Wow all right folks so we're trying this again got kind of a tight turn in here oh I see Patrick has beat me in up here He must have turned in correctly. All right, so I'm just going to kind of park here and start untarping because I'm not, there ain't a whole lot of room around here. Okay, guys, let me show you the loads. There's Patrick's load there. He's got his, everything unstrapped and untarped. Here's my load. I haven't gotten the straps off yet, but just giving you another look at it. Three tiers. I think it was 26 or 28 foot. So just got to get my straps off. I had a double folded canvas tarp over the front edges and the rear edges. And then two four foot drop tarps. So I had four tarps to put up. I think uh, Patrick had the same, even though his load was longer. There's only two tiers. There's our I-30 out there. All right, I'll show you some unload if I can. Okay, guys, I'm getting unloaded. Patrick just left. In fact, you might can see him down through there. Got, got a skinny exit right there. He just got a, an order and he's going to the dreaded Dallas Home Depot Distribution Center, <laughs> which is probably where I'll be going. But uh, here's my unloader, Benny. Just started. This is the first bundle coming off. So uh, just going to show you a little bit of that. Oh man, that sucks having to go to the Home Depot from here. Cause you know, we're about 25 or 30 miles from Dallas. And then you have to go through Dallas to get to the Home Depot distribution center and then come back through Dallas to, I think he said he's delivering to one in uh, like Southwest Little Rock. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, maybe his trailer will be ready. <laughs> oh, we'll see, we'll see. So it's probably gonna take him about half an hour to get this unloaded. Then I've got three timbers right here to put, put under there and I'll be, uh, I've already got my paperwork signed. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and send it in and see what kind of order I get. See if I can get you another shot of Benny over here. Maybe his mama was an Elton John fan. Yeah, so my product is longer than what uh, Patrick was hauling, but he had two sections. So. I don't know what they do at this place. Uh, they must uh, process it somehow. Cut it. I don't know. Oh, I see. They make axles. That's what it looks like. They probably use the tubing to make these these axles. Huh. Sometimes the answer is right behind you. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's how it works. And then once I get unloaded, we are supposed to exit out of there. You know, you have to kind of do a dog leg turn and wheel around that way and then kind of back up this way and then head out that way. It's kind of tied up in here. So, all right, I'll let you know where I'm going when I know something. All right, folks, I am happy to report 
that I am, my next order is going to Broken Bow, Oklahoma. I just left my customer back there in Roy City, Texas, about five miles back. I'm on I-30 heading east, away from Dallas. Yes! That is a wonderful thing. Poor old Patrick had to go to the Home Depot Distribution Center, so I feel bad for him. <laughs> but better him than me! Woo! Of course, he had a, quite a bit more time on his clock than I did. I mean, I'm down to, I don't know, I think I got like nine, ten hours maybe. Let me see. Nine and a half hours. So I should be able to get to Broken Bowl, get loaded, and get home unless I get severely bogged down. So, uh, GPS says I've got two hours and 40 minutes to get from here to Broken Bow. And this is the place I've picked up at three or four times, but it's been a while, like I always say. J.M. Huber, they do um, strand board, like, uh, I remember, you know, it's like for floor, floor decking stuff, and it has to be tarped, but they have a crew and a little tarp building where you pull, you pull into it after you're loaded, and their guys put the tarps over for you. Basically, all you have to do is, you know, strap it and secure the tarps down, and it delivers Monday at noon. Know, normally we have to get our uh, Monday deliveries done at Maverick by 10 a.m. But in this particular case, I have an appointment, a noon appointment at a Lowe's in St. Joseph, Missouri, which is up north of Kansas City. So, um, and it sounds like it, it must be like a Lowe's distribution center. I don't think it's an actual store. That's just a guess. So, man, I'm so glad. So glad. And it was kind of kind of iffy there for a minute because it, at first they sent me this load going to Broken Bow, and then I was about to pull out of the customer out there and head to Broken Bow, and they sent the message canceling that order. So I had to wait about 10 or 12 more minutes thinking, you know, they were going to send me somewhere else, and they resent that order, so I don't know, you know, they were juggling loads around or maybe they had a Maverick IC driver that had said he wanted it and then backed out because, you know, my understanding is the Maverick independent contractor division drivers IC, we call them, you know, they kind of get to, to pick uh, their loads to some degree, you know, like they might give them two or three options of loads that are available and they can choose, whereas me being an employee driver, I don't normally get that luxury. I don't know. I'm just glad I'm going to Broken Bow and not Dallas. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in Broken Bones.